When I encountered Jesus, I'm just telling you this, on the day that I got saved, the day that I had a radical encounter with Jesus, near the end of that conversation, Jesus Christ said to me, you've had your life, now it's mine. He turned my life upside down, right side up. Mm. Hallelujah. And I thank God for it every day since, in the 40 years since. All right. And when he does turn your life upside down, right side up, it's your attitude with what happens that others are seeing and, and draws them in. Absolutely. Because you know what? He came that we would have life and have it abundantly. He came that we would have joy and our joy would be made full. This is what his love does in our life. And people have to see that. It's, you know, it's, it's seeing it and hearing it that makes it the reality. Being the salt of the, the earth, as we talked about last time, it should make people thirsty for what we have. And it will if you'll live it, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so he changed Peter's life. He changed Andrew's life. He changed Paul's life. He changed a lot of lives. He changed my life. But he said, and you will be hated by all because of my name. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Matthew 16. So then none of you can be my disciple who does not give up all his own possessions. That's why Jesus said, that we, gonna, we need to count the cost. And in fact, the cost can be total. Picture again for a moment that clay vessel, the one that was overflowing, the one that's turned upside down. Now picture it sitting there, filled to the brim with water. Right? You got that picture in your mind, and all of a sudden, pow! Along comes a bat and smashes into it. What happens then? The water just bursts everywhere. Explodes. Explodes and bursts everywhere. We're fearfully and wonderfully made, but we're fragile, those clay vessels, right? Picture it. The tongue of the righteous is as choice silver. The heart of the w wicked is worth little. Proverbs 10, 20. The tongue of the righteous is as choice silver. High quality bells are often made out of silver. Silver bells. Right? Because mm -hmm. one of the qualities of silver, in addition to being a precious metal, it's because, because it's rare, is that it's sonorous. What sonorous means is that when it's struck, it gives off a beautiful sound. Jesus Christ was struck violently on the cross, and love burst forth across all mankind and all time. He was struck, and the sound he gave off was, Father, forgive them. Had it not been for that godly sound, that godly evangelism, that still reverberates and resounds throughout the ages, there would be no new life possible, not even a hope of it. So in any of those three cases, we have to be willing, but passive participants. All right? We do the evangelism, but we don't do the revival. Evangelism is the love of God flowing through us. And as the writer of the letter to Hebrews said, it is the Lord who will equip you in every good thing to do His will, working in us that which is pleasing in His sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Right? Hebrews 13, 21. God filled you with His love and His word, and He will cause it to come out. So willing becomes the key word, right? We have to be willing. Jesus withdrew from them about a stone's throw before mm -hmm. he went to the cross that night. And he knelt down and began to pray, mm -hmm. saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. And yet, not my will, but thy will be done. Luke 22. You have to be willing to do the work of an evangelist. You have to be willing to have the Lord fill you to overflowing, even if it makes a mess around you. Mm -hmm. You have to be willing to let the Lord turn your life upside down because he'll be turning it right side up. You have to be willing to understand, to take those blows, to take that persecution that comes because what will happen when that vessel is broken is God's love will explode from you and touch lives around you. And like on that day, 
that Roman soldier, that Roman centurion, stood there and saw this, and he said, surely this was the Son of God. Hallelujah. Evangelism is not our little meetings. Evangelism is allowing God to use us as he chooses. No matter what. No matter what. No matter what the cost. Mm -hmm. Stephen gazed intently into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at his right hand. Falling on his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. A young man named Saul was an improving witness to this, and the seed of God's love was planted that would bear fruit on the road to Damascus. Truly evangelism and revival. My Lord.